Well, thank you all so, 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 so much for coming. This is really super exciting for me. I haven't taught in a year and a half, something like that, since this all started. So this feels really special. Um, I was mentioning to you both, this is my first class teaching with a mask on. So if you can't hear me, just tell me, please, and I'll, I'll speak up. So I'm not, does it sound okay right now? Can you hear me okay? okay. Um, yeah, so Kim and I are gonna be alternating weeks. I'll teach every other Wednesday. So Kim, we'll be seven o'clock on Wednesdays here, um, same sign up process. Um, when we were chatting about starting an in-person class again, we realized, you know, a, a weekly class is, I think we're all kind of realizing this now, like as we're going back to work, like can't, like, can't believe we used to do the things that we used to do. <laughs> Like I used to work full time and teach three classes a week and I was like, how, how was that even possible? So um, I think starting with an every other week uh, cadence will be more manageable and balanced. So that's what we're going to do. Um, and I, I also kind of wanted to get clear on what our intention or motivation was for practicing together again. Um, and as I was pondering that question in myself, like, why, why do I want to hold space in this way? Why do we want to practice together? I kept landing on questions rather than answers. And those questions were like, how are we going to come out of all of this? How are we going to emerge from this whole thing as like whole healthy human beings? And how are we actually going to create these just and liberated reality that we want to see? How, how do we create liberation for everybody? How do we bring healing justice practices into our everyday life. And as those questions are like floating around in my head, I, I've been realizing that something that I've been doing probably my whole life and definitely in the last 18 months is when I hear those big questions, they're really overwhelming. And I tend to like dissociate and avoid and ignore and disconnect from myself and other people. And um, that's a really great protective strategy in the short term, right? It's like really good strategy for myself in small doses, but then it becomes really harmful over time, personally and for the collective, right? If we're not engaging with these questions and sitting with them together, then we're not moving towards the future we're trying to create. So um, my intention for holding this Space and Kim's too, I believe, is, is to just really practice not dissociating, like actually being in our body. And sometimes that's uncomfortable. Sometimes, I mean, for me, there's a lot of grief there right now. When I really tap into my body, I feel a lot of sadness over the last year and a half. And it's really hard to hold that, especially on your own. So I'm hoping that in a space like this, that we can do that together. Um, I went to one in-person yoga class over the last year and a half at the People's Yoga, and I cried a lot <laughs> during that class. So I just want to put that out there that if, if you have an overwhelming emotion tonight, that you can let it out, and that's totally fine. If you want to, like, excuse yourself and have a couple tears in the other room, that's totally fine, too. It's just, it's a lot, right? You've been through a lot. Um, so, yeah, so this class's intention is to just learn how to be in our bodies again, or maybe for the first time, right? Many, many of us have been dissociating our entire lives. So learning how to be in our bodies. And I think from that place, that's where we're gonna be able to find answers and build the community and the connections we need to actually dream into and envision this new world that we wanna to create together. And yoga is like this amazing tool for doing that, right? So yoga is, yoga is about liberation and freedom from suffering. And if we understand liberation as something that is bound, like, like my liberation is bound to yours and yours and yours and yours, and I'm not free until we're all free and until everyone is free. So the practice of yoga in itself really is like a practice of embodied justice. It's a practice of living your values in your, in your life in a way that is embodied and whole. So this seems like the perfect practice for what we're trying to do tonight. I hope that that 
resonates with some of you, of course, you can always bring your own intention into this space, but, but that's mine. So I just want to make sure I laid that out there um, before we get started. Um, class is going to be kind of sandwiched. A couple of you have taken my classes before when we, I used to teach next door and we'll do, we'll start on our backs and do some kind of slow, just coming into our bodies and coming into the space. And then we'll move through a slower kind of hatha practice. It would be fairly gentle and then come back down to the floor for restorative practice to, to close out the class. I am gonna weave in a couple of like body-based tools that I've picked up over the last year that can be really soothing to the nervous system. And I have found myself using these tools like before Zoom meetings and when I'm like stressed out in the car or whatever. So um, you might, if they resonate for you, you might take those with you too. So those will be peppered in. Um, and then the last thing I wanna say before we get started is I, I think the class I've planned tonight is pretty simple just in terms of like the poses that we're gonna do. Um, and I wanna encourage you to, you know, like my, my instruction is a suggestion. It's just meant to be a container and sort of a roadmap for where we're headed. So if you feel like you need to move in a different way or you wanna come into a different posture or spend a little longer in a space, like do what you need to do. I will not be offended. So, so move however you want to move. That's part of what it means to be embodied and come into, come into your body. Does that all sound okay? Okay, cool. Um, well, let's, let's get props set up. So you can put your blocks up somewhere towards the top of your mat. We'll get to those a little bit later. And then we're going to start on our backs, but we might as well get our blanket situated. So um, I like to fold mine kind of about like so, and just place that in the middle of your mat. This is just gonna be some padding for our knees and um, padding for our pelvis as we lay down. So you can sit on your blanket once you have it folded and then come down to lie on your back. And as we start class, you can just, just make a choice for yourself if you wanna have your legs extended or you can have your feet on the floor, knees up towards the ceiling. Listen to what your low back might be telling you about that choice and adjust if you need to. And just take these first few minutes of our practice to bring your attention into this room. So one way to do that is to feel the floor underneath your body and the mat and the blanket, how the floor is kind of rising up to meet you and support you and hold you. And then you might notice the temperature in the room. the quality of the air, the way it feels against your skin. And then you can widen your awareness a little bit, bring your awareness outside of the room and just notice sounds that you hear, cars on the street outside, music coming from the neighbor. starting to locate our bodies in this space. And as you're finding yourself here, I will invite you to begin paying attention to your breath. You don't have to change anything about your breath just yet. Just gonna notice where you feel it. Notice if you're breathing through your nose or your mouth. And it might feel good to start lengthening your breath. 
long as that doesn't cause any anxiety, I'll invite you to just take a little bit deeper inhale, soften your belly and let the ribs and belly expand as you breathe in. And let everything soften as you breathe out. As we're coming into the breath, it might feel good to bring your hands to your body. You can take hands to your belly or a hand to the heart, hand to the belly, maybe both hands to your chest. And letting your hands give you some feedback about your breath, helping you tap in and just notice where it is, where it moves inside of you. And as we're here with our breath, let's just do a little body scan. So part of our practice of coming into the body is feeling all parts of our body. So if you could first take your attention down to your toes. Notice your toes. Notice the feeling of the air around your toes. And the bottoms of your feet and your ankles. And then you can let your attention move up the legs over the calf muscles, the shin bones and the knees, the backs of the knees. Notice your thighs, front, back, your hips, your pelvis. Notice your spine, your belly, your chest. Notice your heart beating inside of your chest. And let your attention move across your shoulders, your upper arms, your elbows, your lower arms, your wrists, your palms and your fingers. Notice your neck and your throat. the weight of your skull, and then over the next several breaths, try to relax the muscles in your face. And just consciously noticing if you have a furrowed brow and seeing if you can soften your brow line. Let your eyes relax back into their socket. Relax your lips and your jaw, your tongue. Mm -hmm. We'll just take another couple of breaths here. And when you're ready, you can start to stretch your arms up overhead so they're long. Yeah, and just feel the full length of your body stretch from your fingers to your toes. Take up as much space as you can. Good, and then relax your body. And let's take the bottoms of the feet to the floor. You can keep your arms overhead if that's comfortable. And we'll take the feet out so they're about as wide as your mat. So you can kind of heel toe them a bit out, yeah. And we're just gonna slowly windshield wiper the knees side to side. So when you're ready, let both knees fall to one side. And then when you're ready, lift them up towards the ceiling and over to the other. And I'm gonna let you just take that at your own pace. It can be super slow. It can be a little bit quicker. 
might feel good to really stretch the knees down and forward. So you kind of open up through the hip flexor. And if you're curious, you can explore your breath in your side body. So see if you can move your inhales into the sides of your ribs. And we're just kind of gathering information right now about the state of your body. So you're just noticing what might feel creaky, what's, what's really feeling juicy and enjoying this movement, what's feeling some resistance. I'm just paying attention to those things. And then the next time that your knees come up through center, you can pause there. And we're gonna reach the feet straight up towards the ceiling. So lengthening the legs up towards the sky. Yeah. Good. Okay, so let's go ahead and flex the feet. So we're gonna draw the toes towards your face. Yeah, your knees can be bent a little bit here. And we're just looking to find a little stretch through the backs of the legs, the calf muscles. You might play around with pointing and flexing the toes. So pointing the toes towards the ceiling and then flexing the feet back. So seeing what, what the range of motion is there, what it feels like to do that. There might be some cracking and popping. And then if you wanna explore some circles, you can find some ankle rolls here, circling the feet. Yeah, this can be kind of free form. There's no right way to do this. I just want you to feel what your feet feel. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and then when you feel ready, you can bring your knees in towards your chest and go ahead and wrap your arms around your legs. It might feel good to rock a few times side to side. And we'll be coming to a seated position next. So you can get there a few different ways. It might feel good to rock and roll along the length of your spine and roll up to seated. Or if you'd rather roll over onto one side and then use your hands to support you as you come up, you can do that too. Okay, we doing okay? Can you hear me better No. Okay. Okay, so, um, it might feel good to have a little more height underneath your pelvis here. If you want to roll your blanket a little bit more underneath of you, you can do that. And let's just take the fingers down towards the sides of our body so that the, yeah, you got little like tented fingers. Perfect. And then press down through your sit bones and sit up really tall and take an inhale. And then exhale and tilt your head to one side, either side, fine. And we'll just explore a little movement here. So it might feel good to turn your chin down towards your shoulder or up towards the ceiling. Kind of feeling into tension that is probably there. Most of us have some tension there. Good. And then when you feel ready, we're just gonna trace the chin across the collarbones and over to the other side. So you're bringing the other ear to the opposite shoulder. Good. And you can explore here too, maybe turning chin down towards the shoulder or up towards the ceiling. And as you're ready, you can let the chin come back towards center. So we're just letting the gaze look down towards the floor. And from there, inhale and lift your head back upright. Perfect. Okay, on the next inhale, let's sweep the arms out and up and really stretch through your fingers. Okay, and then exhale the arms out and down. Okay, we're gonna do that a couple times together. So inhale out and up. And exhale out and down. Good, inhale out and up. 
And let's pause there and take the left hand down to the floor. And we're just gonna crawl the left hand towards the left as you lean over for a big side stretch. It might feel good to kind of curl the heart up towards the ceiling here. All right, and let's inhale, come all the way back up, lift both arms. Exhale, right fingertips to the floor. We'll crawl them towards the right as you take a big side stretch to this side. Nice big inhale and exhale. And let's inhale, come back up through center. And we'll take the hands to the floor right in front of you. And take a look at your legs for a moment. I just want you to notice which leg is forward. We're gonna switch that in a second. So just pay attention to which one you have forward and we're gonna to start to crawl the fingertips forward and let your torso drape over your legs. And I'll encourage you to breathe into your back body here. So see if you can breathe into the low back. Kind of around your kidneys. Check in with the muscles of your face again and see if you can soften through your lips and your eyes. Okay, and then let's crawl the fingertips back towards your legs. So you come upright and we're just going to switch which leg was forward. So swap out your leg. And then sitting up nice and tall, we'll start to crawl the fingertips forward again. If it's comfortable to let the head hang heavy, you can do that here. And just take a few deep breaths, concentrating on bringing breath backwards into the back body. And when you're ready, you can start to walk your hands back towards your legs and come upright. We're gonna to come to a tabletop position next. So you might open your blanket up again, just so you have some padding for your knees. And before we get into a lot of movement here, let's bring our attention to the fingers and the wrists. So it might feel good here to flip the orientation of your hands and kind of spin the fingers out and back. You can do that with both hands at once. If it feels okay, if that's too much, you might just try one at a time. Just a couple breaths there. It may feel good. If, if you have a lot of flexibility in your hands, it might feel good to kind of peel the palms back a little bit, stretch into mm -hmm. the fingers. When you feel pretty satisfied with that, you can flip the hands back around so the fingers point forward. And we'll just move through some cat cow. So as you inhale, we'll lift the head, lift your tailbone, widen your collarbone. And then as you exhale, push into your hands and round your spine, your head can drop. And we'll just move back and forth like that. So inhaling as you lift head and tail and exhaling as you round the spine. Take that at your own pace. Good. And then notice your hands as you're making this movement and see if you can really press down through the places where your finger connects to the palm. Okay. And let's... Um, Bring in any kind of movement here that might feel good. So it may feel good to kind of stretch the hips back towards your heels. You might look over one hip at a time. This can be kind of free form, just whatever your spine is calling for. You might do some sort of rolls with the pelvis or the head. Great.
And when you're feeling pretty satisfied with that, we'll come back to a nice neutral spine and press down through your left hand as you reach your right arm up towards the ceiling. And then as you exhale, we're gonna thread the needle. So right arm will slide under the left and you can bring the right side of your face down towards the floor. Be here for a few breaths. When you feel ready, you can push down through the left hand and start to reach the right arm back towards the ceiling. And then exhale, let the right hand come back to meet the floor. And let's take one round of cat-cow. So inhaling as you lift head and tail and exhaling to round. Inhale back to a neutral spine and then we'll inhale to reach left arm up towards the sky. And exhale to thread the needle, left arm under right. A few breaths here. Soft belly. On your next inhale, press down through the right hand, reach the left arm high. And exhale back to tabletop. Okay, right, let's tuck the toes under here and then stretch the hips up and back for downward facing dog. If you don't feel like doing down dog today, you're welcome to come back to a child's pose or puppy pose. We'll spend just a, a minute or two here. Well, not quite that long, maybe 30 seconds here. Just kind of walking it out. So if it feels good, you can bend your knees. You can kind of pedal the feet, shake the head yes and no. Good. All right, and we're gonna find a little bit of a flow here between down dog and child's pose. So as you inhale, come back to tabletop, knees to the ground, and then exhale takes you to child's pose. Good, inhale back to tabletop. And then exhale, downward facing dog. Good, inhale, tabletop. Exhale, child's pose. Inhale, tabletop. Exhale, down dog. So we're gonna add on to that just a little bit. So as you inhale for tabletop this time, come into a little bit of a cow pose. So you're gonna reach the tail and the head up. So you're coming to tabletop, that's our inhale. And then we're gonna exhale child's pose. Inhale for cow pose, lift head and tail. Exhale, down dog. Good. Couple more times like that. Inhale for cow pose. Exhale, child's pose. Inhale for cow. Exhale, down dog. Beautiful. Okay. Good. Noticing your hands press down through all your fingers. Okay. You can finish one more round of this if you'd like. We'll meet back in downward facing dog when you're ready. Lovely, okay. All right, so on our next inhale, let's come forward to plank pose. I'm gonna lower my knees for this one today because I don't have a lot of energy for it, but you're welcome if you have, if you have the stamina and wanna keep the knees lifted, you can. We're just gonna pause here for a second and feel your strength. So press down through your fingers, your thumbs. See if you can reach your heart up through the shoulder blades towards the ceiling. Yeah. Good, okay, let's take one inhale there and then exhale downward facing dog. Take a full in breath and exhale open mouth. 
Good. Inhale for plank pose. Again, you can drop knees if you like. Feel your strength. This time, feel your legs. See if you can really squeeze the muscles of your legs like you're hugging your thighs to the thigh bone. Reach the tailbone back, top of your head forward. Good. Inhale there. Exhale, downward facing dog. Big inhale. Full exhale. Good. Inhaling for plank pose last time. This time, let's exhale and lower down to our belly. Good. And then inhale here. Pose. Untuck the toes. Your feet down. And then as you inhale, peel your face, your throat, and your heart away from the floor. And then exhale back down. We'll do that a couple of times. Inhale as you peel face, throat, and heart. Exhale, heart, throat, and face. Good. One more time like that. Inhaling up. And exhaling down. And on an inhale, let's push back to tabletop and then downward facing dog. All right, take a bend in the knees and look forward and take lots of little baby steps to come forward to a standing forward fold. This can be a pretty soft forward fold. So you can take a generous bend in the knees. You can let your whole upper body be heavy. This might feel really intense if we haven't done a lot of movement lately. It's a big, big fold. Right. And then from here, let's start to slowly roll up to standing. So just like one vertebra at a time, unraveling. Knees can stay a little bent. You might sway shoulders side to side. Okay. So let's look down at the feet and make sure they're about hips width distance apart. So you've got a nice firm base. Okay, and then we're gonna take just like a micro bend in the knees so we're not locking the joint, yeah. And then bring your hands out in front of you, palms facing each other. And as you inhale, widen your arms, reach your sternum forward and up. And then on the exhale, we're gonna flip the palms and draw the backs of the hands towards each other. And then you're gonna round your spine and let the chin drop. Good. So we're gonna move back and forth like that, inhaling as you open, exhaling as you round. Just do that a couple times at your own pace. If you really stretch through the fingers, you can get a nice stretch through the forearms. Okay, let's do one more. And exhale. Okay, right, and we'll inhale, come back to a nice neutral spine. You can let your arms dangle at your side. Okay, so our first little um, resiliency practice, one of the things I've been using when I'm anxious before a meeting is just orienting. It's a practice of just orienting yourself to the space. So I like to do it um, with a twisting action. So you can bring your fingertips to your shoulders. If that doesn't feel comfortable, you can also take hands in front of you like so. And again, we're just gonna have a little bend in the knees and we're gonna slowly just rotate side to side you can start any direction. And the, the goal here is to keep your eyes open and observe the space around you as you're moving. So you're noticing maybe the, the lighting in the room or um, where the windows are, the other people in the room. You're just locating yourself in this space. And then we'll come back to the center. You can relax your arms and let's look up towards the ceiling, just, just to be fair. Notice how tall the ceiling is, the space you have above you. And then look down towards the floor. And as you look down, we're gonna slowly roll back down. So letting one vertebra at a time, bring you back to that forward fold. Arms and head can be heavy. And while we're down here, let's grab our block. 
So we'll take them underneath your hands, take them up to the highest setting. Yeah. We're coming to this forward fold. We're gonna do a few halfway lifts here. I'll recommend keeping a little bend in your knees. Yeah. And then as you inhale, press into your blocks, lengthen your arms and lengthen your spine. And then see if you can reach your sternum forward a little bit, almost like you have a little cow pose in your upper spine. Yeah, that's it, perfect. And then exhale and fold. Relax head, neck and shoulders. Inhale, halfway lift, lengthen your arms, lengthen your spine. Exhale and fold. We'll do that one more time. Inhale to lengthen. And exhale to fold. Good, okay. Let's go ahead and step one foot back. It doesn't matter which one you can choose. And you might wanna kind of wiggle your body back in space so that your feet are on the sticky mat. And then we're gonna keep the blocks here. I'm gonna keep mine at the highest setting. If you have more flexibility, you might lower them. And we're gonna take the blocks to either side of that front foot. Yeah, beautiful. Okay, so we're gonna find our cat-cow motion here. So as you inhale, we're gonna lift the sternum. And then as you exhale, push into the front foot, lengthen your front leg, let your hip slide back and then round your spine. Okay, we're gonna move back and forth like that, inhaling as you come forward and exhaling as you slide back. I'm just gonna throw out some options as you're moving through these postures. You might practice this with eyes open and continue that orienting practice where you're kind of just noticing where your body is in space, where it is in the room, how the room structure is built around you. Or you might practice with your eyes closed and notice your internal sensation as you slide forward and backward. Right, the next time that you come forward, you can pause there and we're gonna lower the back knee down onto our blanket. Yeah. So you can play around with this a little bit. You, you might sit a little bit more upright where like the knees and the ankles are stacked. That can give a really nice stretch through the, the psoas and the hip flexor. Or it might feel good to kind of take a wider stance and let your hips sink forward. I'm gonna let you play around with that and see what feels good in your body right now. We're bending into the front knee, letting the pelvis be heavy. I encourage you to relax your jaw and relax your tongue. And then we're gonna to start to bring a little bit of strength into the pose. So see if you can draw your low belly in and up and then squeeze your inner thighs towards each other, almost like you're gonna try and dip your legs together. They won't go anywhere, but it's that same sort of action, it's like squeezing the inner thighs. And then from that strength there, we're gonna inhale and lift the arms. And then exhale and soften your shoulders. Good, let's take two breaths here. One more inhale. And as you exhale, you can bring your hands back to your blocks. So we're gonna set them aside, place your hands on the Back knee. We're going to step the front foot back to plank pose. Nice big inhale here. And then exhale as you lower to your belly. Throat to your heart. Exhale, heart, throat, space. Downward facing dog. Taking a little bend in your knees here, stretch your sit bones up towards the ceiling. Yeah, that's it, perfect. Good, root down through the pointer finger and the thumb. Lovely, amazing. Okay, and then go ahead and gaze between your hands, bend your knees and walk your feet forward to a standing forward fold. Feel free to use your blocks here as we inhale for a halfway lift, lengthening the spine. And then exhaling to fold. Okay. All right, let's step the other leg back, whichever leg you did not do last time. If 
you forget, you'll remember once we start moving. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So coming into, into this posture here, you might rise up onto your fingertips. I like to have that extra space kind of for breathing room. And we'll just move through those cat cow shapes here. So as we inhale, we'll lift the heart, lift the sternum, and then exhale, push into the front foot, let the hip slide back, back heel sink. And then inhale as you come forward. And exhale as you shift back. Good. We'll take this at your own pace. It can be super slow, it can be a little quicker. It might be one breath, one movement. It might take a few breaths to move back and forth. And then again, an invitation to practice with eyes open or closed. Closed eyes might give you a greater sense of your internal experience. Open eyes might give you a greater sense of where you are in the room. And then the next time that you come forward, you can pause there. And we'll just let the back knee gently come down to the blanket. Yeah, and then making some choices here, you might, like I said, sit up a little bit more upright. That might feel better in your hip or you might let your pelvis kind of melt forward. We'll just take a couple of breaths there. I find I get the best sensation here if I really like soften the belly and let my breath expand down into my low belly. This relaxed jaw, relaxed tongue. Good, and then we're gonna to try to bring a little bit more strength into the pose. So think about drawing your low belly in and up and then engaging your inner thighs as if you were gonna zip them together. And then from that strength there, you'll inhale and lift your arms. And then soften your shoulders away from your ears. And we'll take two breaths here. One more inhale. And then exhale as you let your hands come down to the mat. You can set the blocks aside. And we're gonna step back to plank pose. So a nice big inhale here. And then exhale, lower to your belly. Inhale as you lift face, throat, and heart. Exhale, lower heart, throat, face. Inhale up to tabletop. And exhale, downward facing dog. Good, root down through all your fingers, especially where the fingers connect to the palm. Okay, taking a little bend in the knees, you can walk or hop your feet forward to a standing forward fold. Maybe using your blocks, we'll inhale halfway lift and exhale fold. Okay, here, let's inhale, come to chair pose. So we're gonna let the knees bend, the seat's gonna come back and we'll bring the arms either overhead or straight out in front of you. We're just here for a few breaths, just to bring some heat into your legs. Beautiful, let's do one more inhale. And then exhale and fold. Good, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale and fold. Good, pushing into your feet, let's start to slowly uncurl the body back up to standing, one vertebra at a time. All right, so from here, let's all take a turn to the right. So turning towards the windows on this side and step your feet out nice and wide. We're just gonna do a couple of side facing postures before we start to wind down. So um, your right foot's gonna be about parallel to the back of your mat. Maybe, maybe a little bit in actually, your toes might come in a little bit. And then the front toes are gonna point straight forward and we'll bend into the front knee so that it tracks over the front ankle. Beautiful. And then from here, let's just lengthen the arms out nice and wide, soften your shoulders. 
is warrior two. Take a moment and gaze down at your front foot and make sure you can see your big toe. Sometimes the front knee wants to like fall inwards. We'll just keep it safe by drawing it out. Perfect. Yeah. Good. Okay, so we're coming to side angle pose from here. So we're going to inhale as you reach forward, reach as far as you can, stay connected to your back foot. And then we're going to let either the elbow of the front hand come down to your thigh, or you might grab onto one of your blocks, place a block under the hand. And then let's inhale, sweep the other arm towards the front of the room, open up through your side body. Big in breath here. Full out breath. Good, root down through both your feet as you come back up to warrior two. And then as we exhale, we're just gonna reverse that. Let your back hand drop down towards the back leg, front arm reaches up and over. And then inhale back to warrior two. Push into the front foot and lengthen that leg. And we're gonna take this on the other side. So we're just gonna swap the feet. Your left foot will now be parallel to the front of your mat. Back toes face the back of the room. Perfect. Looks good. And just checking in with your front knee. We're gonna bend the front knee. It'll track right over the front ankle. Looks good. Arms out nice and wide. Taking attention to your feet for a minute, just see if you can relax the tops of your feet and relax your toes. So the effort's really moving through the heels and the balls of the feet. And then we're coming to side angle pose. So we're gonna reach, 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 reach. And then let that front elbow meet your front thigh. Other arm will sweep overhead. Nice big inhale here. And exhale. Good. Inhaling, let's come back to warrior two. And then exhale as you reverse warrior. Right arm sweeps overhead. Good. Inhale, come back to warrior two. And then we'll push into the right foot, lengthen that leg, and we'll take both sets of toes to face the side wall. Good. Coming to a wide legged forward fold, you can either take your hands to your low back. If it's accessible and feels good to you, you can clasp your hands. And then we'll inhale to open the chest, maybe reach your fists down, and then exhale as you fold forward. If your hands are clasped, you can let the arms come overhead if that feels good. If clasping the hands does not feel good, doesn't feel good for everybody, you can totally let your fingertips just rest down at the floor. That can feel nice too. This is a really good face to, space to let your face completely relax. So we have masks on, no one can see what your face looks like right now. You can just let the eyes be heavy, the lips heavy. Good. If your hands are clasped, you can bring them to your low back and then release the clasp and take the fingertips down to the floor. I'm gonna give us a little time for some free form movement here. It might feel good to just shift your weight side to side, stretch through the inner thighs. Sometimes it feels good to take like a short wide down dog. So you might keep your legs wide and walk your arms forward. That can feel nice. You might play around with um, shifting weight towards your toes and then back towards your heels. Okay. And taking your time, there's not a rush at all. So if this feels good, stay here. We're gonna start to walk the hands back around towards the front of the mat and make our way back to down dog. You can get there however you want. So if you wanna move through a vinyasa, you're welcome to do that. If you wanna take a child's pose instead, that's also an option. Okay. This is gonna be our last down dog of the practice tonight. So when you feel ready, you can lower your knees to the ground and we're gonna set up a comfortable seated position. I'm gonna use my blocks. I like to stack blocks like this and I'll just sit them underneath my sit bones like so. This is like pretty nice supportive 
uh, space to be for the pelvis. If you prefer to be cross-legged, you can come back to that seated position we were in at the beginning of class. That works too. Okay. That's it. <laughs> yeah. If the blocks feel too hard, you can place a blanket over them too. That might be nice. So the other exercise I wanted to share with you that I have found so helpful in relieving anxiety is a sounding exercise where we're making noise. I wanna recognize that that can be a very uncomfortable thing to do in a space with people you don't know. So if you're like, I don't wanna make sounds tonight, that's totally fine. You don't have to make sounds. Um, the exercise is basically humming or buzzing like a bee, you know? Um, it's similar to oming. If you've been in yoga classes before where people ohm, it's just a similar um, effect on the nervous system, but we'll be buzzing or humming instead. And we'll basically be taking an inhale and buzzing or humming on the exhale. And as we do that, I'll have you be placing your hands on different parts of your body to see if you can feel the way the sound is resonating inside your body. And it's that resonance the sort of vibration of your, your voice inside your body that is so um, soothing to the nervous system and can tone the nervous system and just calm the vagus nerve, which is this, well, we won't get into that, but it's a, a, definitely a part of how we sort of experience um, fight or flight. So it can be really helpful in just calming, calming ourselves. So the first hand position will be on our heads. You can either interlace your fingers and place your fingers at the top of your head, or you might just kind of gently hold your skull. What we're going to do, I'll, I'll do the first one by myself so you can hear what it sounds like. So we'll just take an inhale and buzz or hum on the exhale. So it'll be something like this. And what I'm feeling for is that resonance in my skull, in my head. I'm feeling for it through my hands and also through any sensation I can have in my head. So we'll do it a couple times there. And then when next we'll move to our chest and ribs and then the next we'll move down to the pelvis. Okay. Again, totally optional. Everything in this class is optional. If this is like super weird and you don't wanna do it, that's fine. <laughs> okay, let's give it a try. So go ahead and exhale first, just exhale all your air. And then take an inhale through your nose and buzz or hum on the exhale. Do one more with the hands there, inhale and exhale. Okay, and then take a nice easy breath in and out, no buzzing. And we'll move the hands to our chest. You can either kind of place both hands right around your collarbones, that's a nice spot, or you might try hands at your ribs. We'll do it a couple times so you can shift your hands if you want to. Take an inhale here. And then buzz or hum. Mm -hmm. We'll do that one more time, inhaling and exhaling. And then easy inhale and exhale, no buzzing. And the last place will be around our pelvis. So you might try both hands at the sort of low belly. I like to kind of cradle my pelvis. So I'll keep one at the low belly and one on my sacrum. I've noticed that in order to feel the resonance in this part of my body, I have to kind of lower the register of the buzz. So buzzing in a lower tone. Um, it, this is the hardest for me to feel, but maybe it will be easier for you. So we'll take an inhale and then buzz. Mm -hmm. 
We'll do one more time there. Inhale. And but. Just relax your hands on your thighs. If it's comfortable, you can close your eyes. And I'll invite you here just to notice if there's an echo of that resonance inside your body right now. Sometimes there's like a residual humming inside. We'll just take a few breaths here together, easy breaths, in and out through the nose. And when you feel ready, you can open your eyes. And we'll start to transition to the integrated rest portion of our practice tonight. So we're going to set up for a couple of restorative postures. The first posture we'll be doing is a, a heart opener. I'm going to give us a few options because everybody's spine is a little bit different. You could try this with your blocks. Um, some of you probably know where we're headed. So if, if you know what you like, go ahead and go there. Um, I've been practicing with my the first block on its lowest setting. We're gonna be placing our shoulder blades on that block and the second block on its medium setting. So this is one, one option. And basically you want the actual um, shoulder blade plate to rest on that first block. And the second block is here to catch your head. So the tops of your shoulders get to kind of drape backwards over that block. So that's one option. If you feel like you need more, if you want a bigger heart opener, you can swap that block that's under your shoulder blades to a higher setting. You can also play around with the, the block that's under your head. And then if you feel like you need a little less, if this is too much, you can do away with the blocks and use a rolled up blanket under your shoulder blades instead. We're gonna be here for a couple of minutes. So if at any point during our our resting time here, you need to move your body or readjust. If you wanna just come flat onto your back, you are more than welcome to do that. Something you might wanna check in with here is how your low back is feeling. It might feel better to bring the bottoms of your feet to the floor. So that's an option for an adjustment. A gentle reminder to soften the muscles of your face. 
relax the eyes, the lips, the cheeks, the tongue. We'll be here for three to five more breaths. So you know where you're headed. We're going to be making our way down onto our backs next. I feel like the easiest way to come out of this position is to start to slowly roll yourself to one side. You can use your forearm to sort of support you as you move the blocks out from underneath of you. And we'll just keep one block nearby. And let's take the bottoms of the feet to the floor so your spine can find some of its natural curvature. Okay, and then we'll still toe the feet so they're about hip width distance apart. So a little bit closer, closer together, yeah. And we're just gonna do some sort of dynamic bridge poses. So as you feel ready, you can inhale, push into your feet and lift your pelvis away from the ground. As that's happening, sweep your arms up towards the ceiling and let them fall back behind you. So that'll be an inhale breath. And then as we exhale, we're gonna bring the arms back towards your sides as you lower your hips. Perfect, so we're gonna do that at your own pace, inhaling as you lift the hips, sweep the arms up and back. And then exhaling as you lower the hips, the arms come down and forward. All right, let's do a couple more on your own, inhaling to lift and exhaling to settle. As you're finding that exhale, see if you can come down like one vertebra at a time. So you're just gently pressing the spine back down. Yeah, nice. Okay. The next time that your hips lift, I'll invite you to slide a block under your sacrum, that bony plate at the base of your spine. Coming to a supported bridge pose. I recommend doing maybe the first or second setting of the block tonight. Yeah. 
we have about a minute or so to spend here. If the block feels uncomfortable, you can give me a little wave and I'll help you adjust. There's an option here if you would like to hold on to the block with your hands for stability and reach your legs up towards the ceiling. And you can have kind of soft legs here so the knees can have a little mini bend in them. If this is feeling good and you wanna stay here for a little bit, you can. Another option is to bring one knee in towards your chest and then lengthen the other leg long in front of you. Yeah. If you feel pretty stable on your block, you might kind of hug that knee that's in towards your chest with one of your hands. And then you can play around with flexing and pointing the foot of the extended leg. It might give you a different sensation through your hip flexor. Yeah. And when you feel ready, you can switch sides. And then we'll gently bring both knees back in towards the chest. And let's lower one foot at a time back to the floor. Nice and easy. Good. And then you can press the feet down, lift your hips, remove the block, and slowly, one vertebra at a time, come down onto your back. And just pause right there for a few breaths before making any movement. And if you would like, you might windshield wiper the knees side to side a couple of times like we did at the beginning of class. And then you can bring your knees back towards the ceiling. And let's take the left ankle and top of the right thigh coming to a figure four. It might feel good just to hang out right there, or if you want to, you can bring that right thigh in towards your chest using your hands for support. Yeah. There's an option to take this into a twist. So if you want to, you can let both of your legs fall to the right so that the bottom of the left foot meets the ground. And then it might feel nice to extend your left arm out to a T and maybe look over the left arm. Few big belly breaths here, breathing into the space between your low ribs and your pelvis. And then let's 
unhook the leg and then bring the knees back through center. Yeah. And then we'll take that on the other side. So you can take your right ankle over the left thigh this time, maybe drawing left leg in. And then if you want to take that twist, you can let both of your legs fall to the left. The right foot will meet the ground. Maybe the arms come to a T. And find a few big belly breaths. And then you can gently unhook your leg and bring them back through center. We're starting to make our way toward our final resting pose, Shavasana. If you have any other movement you want to make, now's a really good time to do that. You might take a happy baby. You might take a different twist, maybe with legs together. If you feel like you're ready to settle in, I want to encourage you to use your props in any way that makes sense. Might feel good to bring a folded up blanket over the belly. Sometimes that extra weight there can feel really nice. Or you might place a blanket under your head if you want a little pillow. As we start to settle into this last resting position, I just want to review some of the things that we practice tonight so that they really land with you. We worked on building resilience through movement, and we practiced a lot of flexibility with the spine and um, free, finding free movement of energy so that messages can travel easily between our brain and our body. We practice creating resonance in our body with our voice to tone our nervous system. We practice orienting in the space, noticing the walls, the ceiling, the floor, the people. We moved in unison together. And part of that is recognizing that we don't act in isolation that we're connected to each other and we can simultaneously practice awareness of our own bodies and awareness of others in the space. And we practice grounding and sensing, feeling into ourselves from all angles. We experience the edges of our body, fingers and toes, our internal state, our breath. And settling in here now, I'll invite you to feel the full length of your body. So just as much as you can, visualize the length of your body on your mat, space between your feet and the top of your head. Feel into the sides of your body as though you're widening yourself into your fullest potential. And 
Notice your back body against the ground, the backs of your legs, your spine, the back of your head. And notice the front of your body. The air that's exposed through your skin. And finally, you drop into the center of your body. You might use your breath to do that, taking a few deep inhales, coming into the very center of you. So your place of inner knowing, your place of belonging, where you might feel a sense of dignity. And we'll take a couple breaths here to settle into the silence of this posture. We can start by exhaling all the air out of your lungs. And take an inhale. And exhale. And do that one more time and inhale. And exhale. I will invite you here to begin deepening your breath. You can find some little movements with your fingers, your toes, your wrists, your ankles. If it would feel good in your body to stretch here, you can reach your arms up overhead, point the toes, just feel the full length of you. And taking your time, you can roll over onto one side. 
and then gently press up to a seated position. If it feels comfortable for you to close your eyes here, you can do so. And just come back into the experience of your breath. So slow inhales in and out through the nose. And notice the way that your body shifts to accommodate that breath. So the ribs expand, belly moves out on the inhale. And then the ribs gather back together as you exhale. Since we've been practicing embodiment, notice if you can sense your fingers and your toes here. And if you feel like you are inhabiting your body, that you're really existing inside your body right now. And let's go ahead and close our practice tonight with a couple breaths together. I'm going to bring my hands to my chest and just kind of cradle my heart. You might do that or you might bring palms together in prayer. Anything that feels uh, meaningful and authentic to you. And then go ahead and exhale all the way. And take an inhale. And exhale. And do that one more time, inhaling. And exhaling. Thank you so, so much for practicing with me tonight. It's really special to have you all here. There's no rush to, to go anywhere. We have the space till 9 p.m. So you're welcome to move slow. Um, yeah, thank you. Thanks. <sighs>